The Temperate House was the largest Victorian glass house in the world and still is when it was built in 1859. It was designed by an architect called Decimus Burton and he took 40 years to complete the building. The central hall was completed before the two uh, very, very considerable side wings. The Tempera House is tremendously important to the work that Kew does. It's one of the listed buildings that there are at Kew and part of the World UNESCO Heritage Site. And it houses about 4,000 different plants from all over the world. The Victorians went out far-flung places, collected these amazing plants, brought them back here. The Temperate House houses a unique collection of plants. The south end, we've got South African plants. The centre part of the house holds a large collection of Australian plants, New Zealand plants. We use these plants for scientists to come and do DNA work. So the role that these plants play is phenomenal. The plants have all sorts of different stories. Some are special because they're very rare. Some are special because they have economic properties, for instance, they're used in medicine. Some just have extraordinary stories, how they came to Kew, the people involved in them. We have plants here, for instance, which were planted way back 250 years ago in the very first days of this being a botanic garden. You have some cycads in that building which are now totally extinct in the wild. They form the finest collection of plants anywhere in the world. One of the challenges, of course, with the restoration is to look after those collections during a period when the building itself will be dismantled. In many ways, the plants are more precious than the building that houses them, but we've got to look after both. The Temperate House has suffered quite a bit since its last restoration. It is a greenhouse and things like iron, masonry, wood, etc. doesn't really last very well in these sorts of conditions. The building is officially regarded as at risk by English heritage. It will fall down unless it receives urgent remedial restoration. So you, can, you can see up here some of the plaster work has dropped off on the top of the lintels here. And you can see up the top of the scaffold in there that the, the actual timber has rotted away. So the, the deterioration of in, the, in here is pretty substantial. The windows breaking, general decay around the plaster work and the steel work, the paint, and certainly the glass with the, the algae build up and the light transmission be absolutely reduced here. So once the restoration is done, the light penetration will be absolutely fantastic. We're going to start this end here. Which is, is this? This, uh, this is a west oh, side, west south side. end. Obviously the glass is quite dirty and cleaning glass on such a big structure is a big problem as we move forward with the project. That's a tremendous goal to achieve, is just to improve the quality of light going into to the plants. We're very, very busy now. Myself and the team are moving plants. Things from fuchsias that will propagate, from cuttings, right through to big plants like the Encephalatus woodii, cycads, palms, that we're trenching, lifting up, containerizing, and then moving out. Well, we've got a huge job ahead of us. We've got over 4,000 different plants that are growing in here, and we need to make sure that these all make it through. Corrosion there, I can see that plate just lifting there. We're looking at the, the tops of the main support ironwork to the glazing. Um, the corrosion protection systems are, are starting to, 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 to fail. This one here that you're going to trench yeah. is going to be moved into roughly this area. Yeah. It's going to come on the other side of the pond. It's quite a bit to do. Quite a bit to do. Let's have, a, let's have a look. So we've got one particular Psychus Revoluta here. This dates back to around 
if we didn't have this restoration, the house would close um, and the general public wouldn't be allowed in. You know, the plants and the collection and the house is for, for not only for me, my staff, you know, it's for everybody. So it's, you know, highly important that, that the house is saved, looked after and, you know, restored, so, you know, for future generations. The vision that uh, the team and I were putting together is this sort of amazing, bright, sparkly house with, you know, a, a completely different layout. The waterfall is going to change. We're going to have a big pool area. So the reflection of the water and the plants and the house is going to look fantastic in there. It's going to be a lot more interpretation for people to engage with the plants and look at the plants and see how they, they uh, are useful to people. In many ways, the temperate house and its restoration and eventual reopening, it encapsulates all of those different aspects of Kew. It's about the importance of plants, their beauty, set in that magnificent cathedral built uh, back in the mid 19th century to support those plants and make the connection with as wide a group of the public as possible about the stories of those plants and why they matter.